Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it Blame Phil because everything seems to have turned on February 2nd, Groundhog Day. So you can blame Punxsutawney Phil. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, but we're first we're going to start off here with the side-by-side -side view of the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. Then we're going to look at the QQQs, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, the Russell 2000 ETF IWM, take a look at a couple of, uh, we're going to look at the interest rate picture, the 10-year yield, and then take a look at the high yield bond fund, HYG. And then in tune with the, you know, the NASDAQ 100, we're going to look at the semiconductor ETF, SMH, and NVIDIA. And we're going to look at a long-term chart of NVIDIA and a daily chart of NVIDIA. And they have, it has earnings coming out this week. I think it's on Thursday. Okay. So the Dow Industrials were down 42 points this last week. The S&P was down 11, and the NASDAQ 100 was up 53 points. So the Dow just, I mean, it's not moving very much at all. It's been down three weeks in a row. But man, I mean, you look at these little doji type candles in here. Uh, and, you know, when you look at both of these over here, the S&P and the NASDAQ 100, and we're talking about uh, the last two weeks have all been within the trading range of the week of uh, January 29th. And when I say week of, I'm talking about week of starting Sunday of that day, st starting Sunday, January 29th. So that's what we're looking at. And here, that's the way, the, the, the way I've got my charts configured. All right, let's go take a look at the Qs, all right? The NASDAQ 100 QQQ. All right, so here's the picture, the weekly view, the uh, haven't really changed this and the daily view. They haven't really changed this because this counter trend move in here, this zigzag move for minor wave one and two, hasn't really, wave two, hasn't really stretched and exceeded what we've got labeled for intermediate wave two in terms of the length, at least not yet. Now, it did it on the Dow and the S&P 500, and that's why I've moved to having in, um, intermediate wave one ending here in October. That is the alternate account that I'm watching. Okay, so that is still a very real possibility. Now, when we go over here and take a look at the daily chart, here's what I'm looking at. If, for whatever reason, we continue to push to the upside in here and we get above 319.40, then I'm going to be switching to the alternate account. But until then, I'm not going to switch. And if we continue to push higher, let's just talk about that scenario first. Uh, my first target would be up here at 321.51 at, at a prior high. And then I'd come up here for the next gap to close at around 329.28. So those are a couple of targets if we continue to push higher. But... You know, one of the things that bothers me about this look that we've got in here, let me get rid, let me just let me get rid of the crosshairs for a minute. Let me go to my marker. This corrective activity right in here. This is larger than anything that we've experienced in the move, you know, coming off the December low. Okay? So either we've got something like one, two, three, four, five, some bigger move, which I don't believe we've got that big a move coming, If we, even if we take out this high and, and keep pushing. So this makes me think that we are possibly breaking down, okay? So I know there's a whole, there's, there's a bunch of you just love to have certainty, love to just say, well, Joe, just tell me which way is it going? Tell me which, what number is it going to hit? And tell me when is it going to do it by? Is it going to do it by March 19th? Um, you know, sorry, that's just not going to happen, okay? Because there is no certainty when it comes to the stock market. Hopefully you know that by now. So what you try to do is lay out the probabilities of is it going to roll over and break down? If it does, then here's the path that we're looking at. And if it continues to push higher, then here's the targets we're looking at and the kind of uh, pattern that's going to develop. So right now, I'm still holding this ABC pattern, still holding wave two. And, um, and we'll watch and see, does it break out on a closed basis? Do we close below 297.25, which is the low right here? If it does, 
then I think there's a pretty good chance we are starting, we are continuing to break down in here. All right, let's take a look at the Russell 2000 ETF. So we have a similar sim situation with IWM, okay? The same kind of labeling, same wave count in here. And again, this wave has not stretched far enough for me to, to move this over and label it intermediate wave two. But if it does, if it stretches above 201.71, which is not very far above that February Groundhog Day high over here, then yes, I'll be switching to intermediate wave two. But again, we're looking at the same kind of parameters in here. If we come and take down this low, take out 188.53, then I think there's a decent chance that we are underway in terms of the breakdown, okay, uh, as a part of minor three of intermediate wave three. So that's what we're looking at, and uh, that's where we're sitting. And of course, you know, if we move this to intermediate wave three, if we push higher, then we're going to be looking at retracement levels as a percent of this big move, not just retracements of this move here, which is what we're looking at right now, wave two versus one. And this is very, very deep already, okay? Very deep in terms of, I mean, look, the high is 199.26, the high over here, 201.99. There's just no more, there's no room, okay, for this, if it pushes higher, it invalidates this scenario that we've got. Okay, so that's where we're sitting. We'll see what happens in here. We've got interest rates pushing higher, and we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Actually, that's the next thing I wanna talk about. Let me pull that up. Okay, so the 10-year yield closed at 3.8, when you round it, 3.83% on Friday, the high. Three, let's see, where is it? It should be giving it to me here. Yeah, it's not cooperating. There we go. Three, well, 390, 3.90%. Literally just five one hundredths of, five one hundredths of a point difference because the high over here is, um, it's not giving it to me. I could tell you it's 3.905%. So it's just, fractionally different for all intents and purposes, the same exact high. Let me get my crosshairs on here so we can see that right in here, a little bit better. So we pushed off of February 2nd, Groundhog Day. That was the low. That was when the stock markets all peaked at least short term so far. We'll see if it holds. And then interest rates continue to push. We've broken this trend line, which is in essence the corrective move that happened from the October high in interest rates, again, when the stock market bottomed, okay? And then we've gone through this whole cycle in here, and now we're pushing back up to the upside. Now, the real question is, are we gonna get this kind of move, or are we gonna get just, are we gonna come up here and just challenge this high? And, uh, and that's it. I mean, we'll see what happens. Right now, it looks like we're getting some decent strength in here. The interesting thing is this 348 level, I say 348, I'm again, if you round it, it's three and a half, but the exact high was 348 over here in June of last year. This level seems to have held pretty solidly. I mean, look how we came down. We just bounced around it, came off of it, came back down, bounced around it, and came off of it. So that 350 level, pretty strong level. And let's just take a look at the long-term picture on this since we're here. Um, let me just move it out and do this. See if I can get this to cooperate a little bit. Okay. And it's a long-term picture. So this is data back to when? Uh, 1998. So this has got the 2000 high at 6.82 percent, the 2007 high June, 5.32 percent, the the uh, nine uh, September 30th, 2018 high three and a quarter percent, and then of course we took that out, you know, here at the 4.33 high that we just had uh, last year. So now it's going to be real interesting to see how quickly do we come up here, do we take this out? But right now interest rates. Sure look like they're pushing. Okay, so that's where we're sitting. And of course, that's what's affecting the market. And of course, it's going to be affecting the, the technology stocks big time. 
Uh, let's take a look at the high yield bond fund and then I'm going to move into semiconductors. HYG, this has been in a pretty good little free fall from that February 2nd high. We've come down here intraday on Friday. We broke this trend line. If we would have closed below this trend line, I would have thought, okay, this is really, really negative. And, and, and this may have been enough damage. I mean, this may be, you know, kind of like, you know, a crack in the, in the dam. Uh, but right now, I mean, it's sure looking like the message coming out of the high yield bond fund is risk off. So we'll see if we can get a close below this. And then uh, that's going to be, I think, a pretty negative picture in here for the uh, stock market. All right, let's take a look at SMH. Okay, the semiconductors have had a pretty strong rally, as you all know, from October and even from the first of the year, from the end of last week of December. Pretty strong move, big zigzag type move in here. Okay, so I have got this labeled as intermediate wave two, and you know, it's definitely a this fits the picture perfectly versus what we just saw with you know, we haven't moved to this yet on the um, on the cues. But right now, when we look at how deep has the retracement been, wave two is a percent of intermediate wave one. Well, you know, we're you know, we're above the 61.8 percent, we're just shy of the two thirds level with 66.7 percent. So we've had a deep retracement. We've gotten above the fourth wave. We've definitely retraced enough for a nice intermediate uh, wave pullback of a wave two. So now the, we're watching. Uh, and it's interesting too. look at the candles of the last two weeks. Uh, you know, the bulls tried to rally it and the bears took control and, and, and uh, took it back down and and then the same thing happened here the next week, this last week. The, you know, the bulls tried to rally it, and then the bears took it back down. So uh, we'll see what happens. It was down $3.36 on Friday. Let me, let me move this over a little bit. There you go. So you can see Thursday, Friday, pretty good, pretty good move down in here and down $1.24 for the week. So again, on the daily chart, here we're watching this trend line. Do we start rolling over and breaking down? Um, but uh, that is where we're sitting with the semis. They've been strong, but they've definitely put in a really nice uh, zigzag type pattern for a corrective move. There is one other thing I wanted to show you on this that uh, I kind of caught my eyes just looking. If you just look at the candles only, just look at the bars only in here. You come back over here to uh, into 2021 and look at where this low was right we're talking plus or minus like a half a point uh, in here for these lows the low here 249.35 the low right here 248.78 and the low right here 249.61 and the low here 249.36 you, you get what's going on and then the resistance came in right in here at 249.12 was the high. This was a little bit shy of that, but you got to say pretty strong resistance in here, 249. That's right in the middle of the pack of what this has oscillated around ever since that February 2nd high. So watching to see, is that all she wrote? I mean, that's definitely, uh, you know, we've talked about the deep retracements. We're talking about pretty strong resistance in here. Uh, we'll see if we continue to push to the downside and take out this trend line. Okay, that is where we're sitting with SMH, and let's take a look at NVIDIA. Okay, this is my best count for the long-term picture on NVIDIA, okay? And I've got data. I, I didn't actually go back and double-check when they came public, but I've got data here, uh, January 1999, and the low split-adjusted, the low is 33 cents. That occurred in like what, April 99, something like that. And the high intro week, this is a weekly view, the intro week high that occurred over here in November of 2021, 346.47. That's one heck of a move, okay? And so right now when I look at this, this looks to me that we've had cycle wave one, two, and that we are still trying to flesh out 
cycle wave three, because when I drill down and look at it, I just don't think we've had five primary waves in here. We've had one, a sharp wave two, a strong wave three that broke out of this initial base channel, broke above it, and then we've, we're looking for wave four to finish off. And right now, I'm looking at this being a zigzag, and we'll talk about that in a minute and talk about why in a minute. Uh, one thing I want to show you is the next thing I would look at to targeting, there's a couple things. First of all, targeting the end of uh, primary wave four, I'd be looking at it moving down into the fourth wave of one lower degree. Well, that's right down into here, okay? Where is that? 74 to 31 or so. So, I mean, let's just say uh, it's getting to the top of it even is 74, 75. So that's quite a ways down from where we're sitting right now at 215. Okay, so the other thing that I would look at and do is I would look at a new trend channel that connects wave one up here, the top of wave three, project it from the bottom of wave two, okay, right here, and project it out and say, well, okay, well, that's where, you know, that's the new channel that we could be sitting uh, looking at. Actually, I don't want to do that. Let me go here. Okay, so now you see what I'm talking about. So now it gives us kind of two targets, the zone right here and the bottom of this channel as a possibility. Now let's take a look at the daily view. Okay, so now when I look at the daily view in here, here's a five wave A move. Okay, so because we've got a nice clean five wave move down, this is a zigzag. Okay, it's not going to be a, a flat. A flat always leads with a three wave. It's not going to be a triangle. It's a five wave A. It's going to be a zigzag. So now the, the real, you're always faced with uncertainty in the beginning in here because you're never quite sure what you're going to get for a B wave. Okay, because it could be any kind of corrective pattern. Okay, but right now it's clearly carved out a zigzag pattern for the B wave. And when you're in a zigzag, typically what you're looking for, the zone is 50 to 79%, 78 78.6, uh, the Fibonacci uh, number. That's the zone, 50 to 79% a retracement of wave A for a zigzag. Well, we're right in the heart of that zone. We've pulled up right into the heart of that up here, slightly above 61.8%. So... You know, that's where we're sitting right now. Um, if we were to, let's say, push higher in here, let's say it comes up a little bit more in here. The next thing I see catches my eye is this gap over here. And where is it we're talking about? Let's see if I can get it. The close is 259.31. So we're talking about right around 259 or so. Uh, you know, that's that's what? you know, 44 points above where we closed on Friday. If this were to continue to push higher, that would be my next target in here. So that's where we're sitting with uh, NVIDIA. Um, you know, the next, in terms of the next major thing I'm looking for out of this is to, uh, is to roll over and start moving down in another five wave move. Well, the other thing you can do too is look at where does the C wave of an ABC zigzag we're, I'm talking about this blue C. Where does that equal? Let me get rid of all this noise. Where does that equal A? Right here at 72, 71.93, 72. Okay, so kind of interesting. We'll see if uh, if that plays out one wave at a time, one one week at a time, one wave at a time. Right now, we'll watch and see. Do we continue to break down in here and roll over, or do we push higher? and finish off a little bit higher up. All right, we're gonna find out this coming week, but that is the bigger picture on NVIDIA. Okay, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head over to joehenches.net, check out the website, check out the membership. Everyone have a great week, and remember the market's closed on Monday.